wish come true. That's what I'm doing today. Welcome to my last video for 2019. What? What are you doing? Stop. Guess what we get to do today? We get to play in December Bingo. And the great thing about that is I'm definitely going to win because even though I might have said we get to play, I'm the only one that's actually playing. So ultimately at some point, I'm going to win. So for the In December Bingo game, I'm going to use my trilogy, which is The Glass Corridor. The first book in the glass corridor, Shattered, is already available right now on Amazon. So stop what you're doing and go get yourself a copy. Just go on, I'll wait. Go ahead. As I was going over some of the questions, I realized that it could be like series based, which is why I'm doing not just using Shattered, but using the whole glass corridor. So somewhere on the screen, there is a bingo card. I made it. I know it's there, even though technically I can't see it right now. I'm going to have to trust me. But I have a little envelope. And inside the envelope are 25 pieces of paper. And on the 25 pieces of paper are numerals from 1 through 25. See how that works? I pick one, whatever that number is. I answer the question and go from there until I get bingo. Hopefully it won't take long to get bingo. So without further ado, let's go pick the first number. Number nine. Best number in the world. I was born on the 9th of April. The heart of Aries. Okay, number nine. Question number nine says, Ho, 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 what's a line or a scene that makes you or your reader laugh? Um, that's not really an easy one to answer. Uh, there are so many. But the first one that comes to mind or the ones that come to mind are all involving Pooey. Um, my girl, she don't have no kind of chill. None. There's a scene in the book where she gets matched with the leader of the bitch clique and she loses her motherfucking mind. Like, she flips out. It is really funny. So, that's one of the ones that no matter how many times I read it, even though I wrote it and even though I know it is coming, I still crack up. Next number. Number five. Question number five. Sleigh bells. What music do you listen to when writing? This is one of the ones I've answered so many times, but I'm going to tell you again for everybody who hasn't watched other tag videos or any of my other stuff. Um, I like to create what I call personal soundtracks for each story. So, and okay, so there's playlists, but for me, I try to imagine them as like movies. So during the movie, different songs that will play and <laughs> the song that plays at the end and the song that plays in the beginning credits. Yeah, I make soundtracks. So that's what I do. So everyone is different. Everyone is different. But while I am writing, it keeps me in the mood to tell the story because I specifically picked them out for that specific story. Mm, look at me. I said specific twice, three times now. And didn't plug it up. What? Next number. 21. Question number 21 is Snow Angel. Which of your favorite characters is most likely to make a snow angel? And which is most likely to be wishing they were on a beach instead? Okay. So quite a few will fall into both categories actually. But I will say... Aaliyah for the snow angel, and Aaron for the beach. 
Okay, next square. Number 11. Okay, number 11. Number 11. Eggnog. What's your favorite writerly drink? And most importantly, do you ever spike it with alcohol? I don't have a writerly drink. I don't have, like, writery, writerly type foods and snacks and stuff that I have to eat while I'm writing. That ain't me. I'm not a snacker. Um, contrary to all the voluptuousness, I am not a, you know, big eater. So, when I write, I don't like eating and drinking as much. But my favorite drink in the whole wide world is Pepsi. Pepsi. That company should be giving me money at this point. I mean, it is a full-blown, straight-up addiction. And just so you know, I went two years, a little bit more than two years, when I was living in um, California, where I didn't drink any soda whatsoever. None. No soda. Pepsi. None of the other companies. Okay? But every single day, I still wanted Pepsi. Like, it did not go away. It didn't. I just gave into it. I'm sorry. I just did. I don't know what else to do. So, the next question for number five is 24. 24. That's her question number 24. All right, number 24. Santa's Workshop. Show us your writing space or a picture of your writing space. Bonus points if it's, a, if it's a disaster zone. Okay. Y'all going to have to trust me and give me my bonus points. Because it is a disaster zone like no other. But I ain't showing it. I ain't showing it. So, I'm taking the points. Because who would brag about their shit being a disaster zone? Just trust me that it is. The next number is number 22, Silent Night. Silent Night, Holy Night. I actually don't like that song. Um, what character refuses to talk to you as a writer? Basically, a character who is hard for you to connect with or write for. I've never had that problem. In fact, I have the opposite problem where none of them will shut the hell up. So this is what I can't really relate to. Ask me a question like, why won't they shut the hell up? My pride, yeah. Ooh. So I'm going to twist that a little bit and say, who do I hate hearing from? And I'm going to say that would be Carter. Carter gets on my damn nerves. I love when the other characters squash her out because I don't like hearing her damn voice. Yes, I hear her voice. I could tolerate her if she would just make better choices, but let's move on. Oops, no idea what happened. I think it stopped recording on me, so I missed this. So let's do it now. Number 12, holiday parties. Do you have a log line prepared for when someone asks you about your book or do you run and hide? Or do you have a masterful plan of a diversion the rest of us can use? Well, for Shattered, I tell folk it's a dark coming of age tale about a girl named Aaliyah whose dreams come true when she received the last spot at a prestigious prep school for the arts. After that, I babble out some form of what the back cover says. <laughs> then I end with, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Um, I am not good at summation in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. <sighs> the next one is... Number four. Four, 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 four. We gotta go all the way back to the beginning. 
Let's start at the very beginning. There we go. Elves. Do you have any writing helpers you'd like to shout out? Emotional support, maybe, or a critique partner? Anyone who helps you from the shadows? Yes, I do. Beyond my kids, you know, who, you know, are my built-in cheerleaders, I have two people that I can count on to be in my corner. They are Danette and Eleanor. Oh, my God. These two goddesses never waver, and I am beyond blessed to have them. I am sorry that the rest of the world don't have them, and no, you cannot have them. They are mine. Just to be clear. Don't get no ideas. Number 16. Number 16, cutting down Christmas trees. Do you edit your manuscript in digital format or print it out? I actually do both. I do many edits as I go along, you know, very, very, very many. But then when I'm done, like each chapter, I'll print a chapter out because I like to have a copy of my um, first draft anyway. I'll print a, a chapter out until I get to the end. Do some editing that way. Do the whole beta thing, blah, blah, blah. But when I actually get the book done to where I think I'm done, like, oh, yeah, this is the book is ready to go. I'm ready to publish it. I will print it again. Like, I mean, excuse me, like have it printed, like through Amazon, get like a proof copy. And I'll print it just to go through it to edit. Because for whatever reason, when I'm editing on screen, on the computer, I still manage to miss shit. So... I do it with the book. Reading it as a book helps me find shit that I missed. So, I do both. Number two. Number two is Rudolph. Do you have any furry writing companions? Bonus points for showing them on film. Aww. Nope. I do. Got some possibilities happening up in here. I'm going to get this soon. I'm going to get it. It's coming. Number 15. Number 15. Wrapping. What character would spend way too much time wrapping presents because they wanted to look perfect? Anyone who wanted their package to look perfect wouldn't take long for them to get it there. So I'll say Spencer on this one, but only because he would care the most. He wouldn't do the best job, but he would think it was a great job. And to everybody else, it would just look like a hot-ass mess, but he'd be really happy with it. Come on now, give me something good. Number 10. Number 10, Santa's bag. If you could tell Santa one item that should be given to every writer everywhere, what would it be? I would say confidence. Confidence in their storytelling ability. Confidence that their style is exactly what they need to tell their story. Confidence that they already have everything that they need to be an accomplished writer. 25. Okay. Clearly, this is meant to drag out forever and a day. Number 25, Naughty or Nice. Which character was on the naughty list, but Santa liked them and took them off? Y'all don't know me very well. <laughs> My naughty characters only get worse with time. They ain't coming off the list. And even the ones that don't get worse, they don't get better. We would have to go all the way to book three to find someone who even comes close to possibly getting off the naughty list. And I can't say the name because it would give stuff away. So we need to pick a character. I'm going to say Joy. But I'm not going to say why. Number seven. 
We have bingo. Yeah. I told you it wouldn't take long. Lucky number seven for the win is feast. What's your favorite food related scene? Do I have one? I don't think I have one. The first foodie scene that comes to mind in Shattered is when Spencer got to have dinner with uh, Aaliyah's mom and sister for the first time. Like they sat down for dinner. That was that was a pretty cool one, but um, I don't really have a fave foodie scene. Food, not my thing. So that gets me bingo. But I'm going to answer all the rest of the questions anyway. So bonus section. But don't worry. I won't drag these out. Number 19, Santa's beard. Who is your oldest character and around how old are they? I would say that Amelia Kyriakis is the oldest character in Shattered. I'm going to have to check. I'll be right back. Okay. So it turns out that Amelia is 59 and Spencer's dad is also 59, but Spencer's mom is 62. But for Shattered, I still want to go with Amelia. But for the series, I will have to say it is Desideria Galena Caprio is technically the oldest one. Desideria. Her name is too pretty for her. She doesn't deserve it. They call her Desi. Number 17, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Which of your characters is most likely to steal cookies and or gifts from Santa? Honestly, can't picture any of them stealing. Not unless it was a prank or something like that. I mean, they're not thieves. Well, that's not true. A couple of them are thieves, but they wouldn't steal from Santa. So, I'm going to have to say none of them on that. Number 23, Traditions. What holidays or traditions exist in your story's world? If you have too many to list, what are your favorites? Well, my story takes place in the current world. So everything that's going on on the planet, they that's what's in it. They all exist. Um, my favorite, though, is Yule. I love Yule. It's my favorite time of year. Samhain is a close second. I really do like Samhain, but Yule, Yule is my favorite. Number 20, Gingerbread House. Who is your handiest or craftiest character? That would be Orchid and Dar. I would say that Orchid and Dar would both tie for like that spot. They both have skills beyond their years. They're just friggin' brilliant. So. Number one, Nightmare Before Christmas. What's a writing or book release mistake that still haunts you? This may not be true for everyone, but it is for me. I think I just talk too much about the story to people and, and I haven't even written anything down. And I try to like, I get so excited and I'm like, oh, listen to this. I have a story, about, you know, idea for this. And I go on and on and on and on, usually with people who don't give a fuck. And then it brings me down because I'm trying to. I'm all excited and they're like gone off to your little fairy tale land girl. So it's a mistake for me because it has slowed slowed me down some. And I wouldn't say so much discourage me. Nothing makes me not want to write, but it makes me feel like wanting to write. Everybody else takes it as something is being slight or dumb or whatever. And that that kind of hurts. So I I really do regret. I've gotten out of the habit of that. I'm better at it now. I am. Number three, milk and cookies. What's your favorite writer snack? Bonus if it's milk and cookies. Yeah, I talked about this earlier. I don't have writer snack 
uh, favorites or nothing like that. I eat what I have. I don't snack while I'm writing. Um, I have gone days without eating because I would forget because I'd be so wrapped up in writing. Like, just not a foodie. But I do love me some milk and cookies now. Don't get me wrong. I just don't have to have them, you know, for writing. Number six, Christmas lights. What character would be most likely to use Christmas lights inappropriately? Such as to tie someone up, shock someone, to rig up an explosive, you name it. If I stick to the Glass Corridor trilogy and not just shatter, then I would have to say Phil Caprio, hands down. He's just mean-spirited. You know, you heard the saying, hurt people hurt people. That's all I'm going to say. Number eight, Santa Baby. Which of your characters could romance presents out of Santa? Baron. Yup, pretty much. That boy has no shame. Number 13, Santa's List. How many characters are in the main cast of your most recent whip or publication? Okay, so that's going to have to be just shattered. Whew. Okay. Um, 13 teens and about five or six adults, give or take. Damn. 18. Blizzard. What's your favorite weather to write in? I don't have favorite weather to write in. I don't care what I write in. I write every day, so I do have favorite weather, however. I love autumn. Autumn is my favorite time of year. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so pretty, and everything's turning orange and, and, and red. And, oh, my goodness. I love it. The, the hot-ass summer is going away, and you're getting cool breezes. Oh, my goodness, yes. Autumn. Um, my second favorite time of the year would be winter. I love winter. I love snow. I love chilly weather outside because you get to snuggle up inside. I hate spring and summer. I have no, they're not, you know, third and fourth. They are ant, cut off after winter. I don't care about the rest of the year until get back around to autumn. In the last slip, number 14, Santa's coming to town. Is your protagonist naughty or nice? If you have multiple books or protagonists, you can do this for multiple. My protagonist is Aaliyah. Um, in Shattered, she's nice. That's all I'm willing to say. So that wraps it up. I won bingo 85 times over. I covered the whole board. Yes. Ha ha. I did it. I did it. Now, for you all, if we haven't fulfilled covering your board yet for in December, be sure to pick up a copy of Shattered. Mark off some spots. And if Shattered doesn't get you enough little boxes checked, then pick up a copy of Encounters, The Seven Erotic Sins, and that should mark off the rest. You will win bingo at that point. You know? Please go do that. Look at all the other indie people. Help a sister out. Help an indie out. Knock it out. Win, win, win. Do this. This was too much fun. So, okay. That's it for now. Just remember, you hold the power as long as you're driven. And the sound of children's crying fills the air And no one is singing I don't hear sleigh bells ringing Santa, won't you bring me